first of all, phrase rhythm, we've talked about it, but let's say it again. Phrase rhythm is really about two things. Echo meter and phrase model. Almost phrase. Phrase, uh, phrase yeah. is structure. Structure, there you go, good. Now, when you have rhythm, you have to have things with duration. Mm -hmm. Well, those are phrases. And so the phrase structure tells us how things are put together, but we're going to mainly be interested in phrases as they come in succession. The rhythm then is a bunch of duration, it's a durational pattern. But these get manipulated and shifted so that some funky things happen, like overlap, <coughs> which means that something begins too early and it shortens the time between one onset and the next, the beginning of one phrase and the next. That's a rhythmic thing, isn't it? That's a rhythmic effect. Uh, in rhythm, there's also this subcategory that we call meter. It's an effect that is about how we experience time, and so that fits into the, the rhythm as well. A lot of our experience of parts of a phrase have to do with where it is in a measure. Um, talk to me a little bit about when these two things are out of sync with one another. So if I have a phrase, but I hear the downbeat over here, so these are bar lines, say, when I have this sort of business happening, there's an effect here. Remember what he calls this? An afterbeat. There, yes, good. Now, afterbeat is one thing. And then there's an upbeat. Mm -hmm. as well. Then you say pop is famous. This, let me get the big term here. We got um, when these two things are out of, are out out of phase. Out good, phase. out of phase. So this is when these two guys are out of phase with one another. The meter and the phrase are not starting simultaneously, but they are, they might be approximately the same, like there might be a hypermeasure that's basically associated with a particular phrase, but they're out of sync. And when they're out of sync, we talk about them being out of phase. They don't begin and end in exactly the same time. They're not synchronized. That's out of phase. Now we've got two diagrams here and two words. Let's make sure we have attached the word to the right picture. What's this called right here? This beginning. Repeat. Are you saying that the B yes. happens and the phrase Say happens? Repeat. Say Not quite. No. Okay. That's going to be phrase expansion. When we have something that's tacked on at the beginning. What's this called, though? Sarah, you were going to say what's called? Is this first example the one that you're saying that the beat happens right on it? Is that what you're saying? And then the phrase begins? That would the be an phrase, afterbeat. The phrase begins first. Okay, the phrase that begins first is an upbeat. Good. Upbeat pattern. Sorry, I wasn't sure which one you were going upbeat? with first. Upbeat? <laughs> I was pointing this Yeah, one. okay. The what second one is, a, is the after beat. It's it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. for that's that, good. where you like have a 16th rest and then your series starts. Kind of. Mm-hmm. So here you have another word for it is anacrusis. You have something that goes oh, yeah, and, and, and leads trans. to a downbeat. But his example here, ba da da dee da da da. So you got this, ba da 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 da. You got this sort of bouncing, rebounding off of a beat that just hit behind you, and the phrase unit is starting after it. That's very yeah. different after effects. Beat? After beat. So when the phrase okay. begins after the beat, it's an after beat. Okay. Um, and it, you know, it's not literally that's the whole effect. When this happens, where the phrase starts, the phrase unit starts after the downbeat, beat, down beat uh -huh. where it sort of rebounds, it bounces off of that beat, you've got an after beat pattern. So these are two patterns, upbeat, and notice that you need to have a distinction here. You need to be very clear that meter and phrase are different or else they'd never be out of sync with one another. And I really think Ross Stein has done us a wonderful service by making it very clear that these are two different things and they interact with one another. Instead of trying to sort of force them to work together, they can be out of sync. And let's just acknowledge it. And acknowledge then the neat effects that come from that. That's good. That's a contribution, a good one. All right, so there are these, 
these two patterns that we need to know, upbeat and afterbeat patterns. Um, you've got an example in front of you that I handed out early on. This is my Beethoven Opus 13 here. Take a look at that and let's listen to it. How many notes comprise the upbeat? Three. 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 Just those first three notes. Do you hear others? Now that's a repeat of something that happened before. Where does that? Where's that first happen? Four. Yes. End of four. End of five. Measure five. That's another upbeat. Okay, do you have any afterbeat yeah, and bass? Mm -hmm. measure, measure eight. Oh, I see. Yeah, if you're focused on the bass line, that's true. That is an afterbeat pattern for a little teeny thing that's um, it's really complementary, so it's not the main thing. Can you find one where the main thing uh, melodically? Well, in top. twelve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you've got your you. And he does it again. So he does it twice. In measure 12, we could have ended on a downbeat. Look at the context just a little bit to be sure about that. What harmony is there in measure 11? C minor. Yeah, it's a cadential 6 4 though, so what's the main harmony in measure 11? Five, 5. 5. Look at the last half of the measure and you just got a 5 chord. G, B, D. What's the E flat doing up there? What about that note? Um, neighbor? Or what's another more specific? Escape tone. So that's an embellishment. All the other notes form the dominant. Okay, so you expect the next measure you're going to get the tonic. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, you do at the downbeat. And the line went three, two, one. You're basically done. See that upper part? Forget the escape tones. Three, two, one. He could have ended right there. But then he throws in this B flat. What does that create? It's not a leading tone, but a leading tone does show up in the bass. See the E natural? There is a leading tone there. It's a bass line. What's the B flat doing there? What member of the chord is it? It's a C chord with a B flat. Seventh. So now you have to rethink it and go, now wait a minute, he just jumped on with a new idea that's going to carry us forward. That's happens quite a bit. So we tend to get these afterbeat patterns when there's a um, like a closing theme kind of situation. So you've, you've arrived, you're done with something, and now a new theme jumps right in on the heels of that. So you're, you're done on the downbeat, and then the closing, a closing theme will often let no space happen between that last phrase and the new one because it's sort of piggybacking on the last one and piling on more attempts at closure. So it's a, it's a time when you don't want to have a rest, you don't want to have dead air, you want to keep the momentum rolling. And thus it jumps in right on the heels, the closing theme jumps in right on the heels of this other phrase. So here's our PAC. He could have been done and there's a theme that reiterates that closure. Um, you notice how he avoids closure in measure 14? You're on a G in the previous measure. To G7, where does he go? Six. Six, deceptive motion. And where does the cadence come? Measure 17. Yes, and a PAC is there. He could have actually ended it in 16. 
So this would have basically been four bars of closing, but he tacks on yet another PAC to really uh, cap it off, close it out. See what I mean by that? It's cool. We're going to get into that more later. That's when you, if you have a, a if you have another cadence tacked on. You know, get a cadence. Is that a phrase? Well, no. It's too small, right? So we say suffix. That's around the bend. <coughs> Expand the phrase by tacking on more material. You could have been done here, you tack something on, that's called a suffix. The main idea though is that you're going to find this after beat pattern happening a lot with suffixes too, but with closing themes in particular. That's the, that's the example we have here. The last little, is that just measure 18 by itself? Is that what you're referring to, or does it continue? No, this is um, this is a PAC in 17, and this is one in 16. Would it, would it be like a new Do you idea? see that? Oh, okay. On the downbeat of 16, he goes mm -hmm. 5 to 1. He could have been done right there. But he tacks on another afterbeat pattern, which forms what's called a suffix. Mm -hmm. Do you see how that's an afterbeat pattern as well? Because this PAC is on a downbeat. And then the suffix begins with that trill D mm -hmm. right after it. So we have a lot of examples of afterbeat pattern here. 